Hi, hello. In this video, we are going to learn about an important tool called control chart. So these are the modules we are for discussion. Control chart basics and uses and the common cause and special cause variation. What's the difference? And then X bar R chart, what it is and how to plot an X bar R chart and then how to interpret an X bar R chart. We'll see in detail so that we can use the control chart very well in our Six Sigma projects. So what you are seeing in my screen is nothing but an, a control chart. This is particularly a sample mean chart. We call it the X bar chart. Any control chart will generally have three lines, a center line, which is represented as green color in this particular uh, control chart called the center line. And above the center line, there will be a red color line. This is called upper control limit. Similarly, below the center line, there is one more line, which is called lower control limit, right? And the points in this particular case, it, these are nothing but the means or the subgroup means the subgroup averages are plotted in the control chart with respect to the center line and the control limit. And based on the way the points are getting distributed, we detect whether the process is you know, under control, whether the process is stable or whether the process is out of control. Particularly this particular graph, when we look at the eighth, eighth sample, the eighth subgroup average is going below the lower control limit. So this process should be considered as a statistically out of control process. That means your results are unstable under such situation, the predictability becomes a problem. So there are three main uses of a control chart. Number one, it helps you to monitor the stability of the process. If the process is stable, then the process is ready for the next level of performance. So the readiness for improving a process to the next level of performance can also be understood by looking at the control chart. Please think of improving a process only when you get all the points falling inside the control limit. If uh, whenever you see an out of control condition and please you need to understand the process needs to be stabilized you know, before improving the process. And the control chart can be used as a visual validation tool to improve that, you know, uh, to demonstrate the improved performance. A process before your project, you see it in the, in the, in the control chart format. And then the same process, or, I mean, uh, no, after the completion of the project, you see, see it in the form of a control chart. You will be able to you know, convince anybody on the improvement. In an improved process, you know, the control chart, the process outputs will fall comfortably inside the control limit and most of the points will be closer to the center line. That way, a control chart can be used as a visual validation uh, to demonstrate an improved performance. Always in any control chart, there are two types of variation. The points are you know, uh, stay slightly moving away from the center line. This is called variation. The variation can be classified into common cost variation or special cost variation. A process, if it is operating with only chance cause of variation or called the common cause of variation or called the normal cause of variation is said to be in statistical control. That means if you could see all the points inside the control limit, you know, at the same time getting randomly distributed within the you know, control limit, then you can consider the process you know, to be in a state of statistical control. That means your process is stable. And when a process is stable, it simply means the variation what you are observing in the process is due to a common cause. Common cause is otherwise known as random cause, normal cause, also known as unassignable cause. On the other hand, we have a unstable process or a statistically out of control process. If a, a process that is operating in the presence of assignable causes is said to be an out of control process. That means if there are points going beyond the control limit, then you must classify the process as unstable process. You should consider the process you know, as a statistically out of control process. And whenever you see a point beyond the control limit, you know, uh, control limits, then the variation should be considered as special cause, considered due to special cause. The special cause variations are also known as non-random variations, non-normal variations or assignable variation because whenever there is a special cause, you can assign a reason for the variation. And that is why they are called as, you know, 
special cause or assignable cause of variation. Please note if a process is struggling for stab stability, your goal should be to stabilize the process. Under such situation, don't try to improve the process. Don't make any changes in the process. Rather, try to stabilize the result by standardizing the process, standardizing the input, standardizing the you know, procedures. Do all those things to standardize the process. Then uh, you will start getting all the points. I mean, all the process outputs falling within the control limit. And that means, you know, this is called stabilizing. So stability is the foundation for improvement. Once the stability is ensured, then, you know, you can, uh, you can understand the stability by looking at the control chart. Once the stability is ensured, you can proceed and then improve the capability of the process. This is called process improvement. Process improvement, we mean it is statistically, we are trying to reduce or move the control limit towards the center. Move the control limit towards the center so that the process become more and more consistent and over and above. You can also try to move the entire process towards the target. That means you can think of moving the center line towards any target value. For example, if it is a profit, then you can try to move it upward. Suppose if it is an expense, you can try to move it downward, right? At the same time, make sure the control limits are closer to the target. So this activity of moving the control limit closer to the center and moving the center line towards the target is called you know, process improvement. And this is what we, we try to measure in terms of sigma level, yield, DPMO, CPCPK or PPPPK, right? So we understood uh, the difference between process control and process improvement. And control is the foundation for improvement. And here we are uh, going to plot a control chart for a particular set of data. And see, there are so, so much data here. This data just represents a, a specific characteristics from a process for an organization like a bank. And these data is nothing but a transaction time or the cash balance in an account. Uh, suppose if it is a manufacturing company, this data might represent the dimension or surface finish or the weight of a product, some characteristic, right? So uh, for Six Sigma expert, for us, uh, statistician, it is just a number, right? And what we are trying to say is whether the number is you know, close to the target or not, and whether the numbers are consistent or not. Since the numbers are you know, coming in decimals and uh, this, these numbers are considered to be continuous numbers or the data is considered to be continuous data. For continuous data, you can go for you know, control chart, variable control chart. In variable control chart, there are three types available. One type is X bar R chart. The X bar R chart can be used whenever the subgroup size is less than eight. Subgroup size is eight or less. That means every time when you go for a sample data collection, how many data you collect? If the, if the number of data you collect or the number of uh, samples you collect within a specific subgroup is eight or less, then think of using the X bar R chart. See here, data is collected over a period of five days and every day there are four shifts happening in the company. And in every shift, the quality inspector is collecting data five times. That means, you know, every shift is considered a subgroup. And so in every subgroup, you have five data. That means the subgroup size is five. And in a day, you collect four subgroup, totally five days. So you have got 20 subgroups with the five data in each subgroup. And that's how you have total of 100 data. Now, in order to plot a X bar R chart, so this is a sampling plan. Your sampling plan is you are collecting data uh, in subgroups and subgroup size is five. And every day you are collecting uh, four subgroup and similarly continuously for five days. That's how you get data for about uh, 20 subgroup and then five samples in each subgroup. That uh, data is collected, then compute the X bar. X bar is nothing but subgroup average. If you have got 20 subgroup, then 20 averages you will get. And then range, this is called the subgroup range. Since you have got 20 subgroup, there will be 20 ranges. Once the average and ranges are found, you go for calculating the average of the average. Average of the average is going to be the center line in your X bar chart. And since you have 20 ranges, then go for the average of the ranges. That is going to be the center line of the range chart. And then compute the control limit. Now, control limit is a function of some statistical constant, you know, depending on the subgroup size. In our case, subgroup size is five. We require a three control chart constant or statistical constant. One is uh, this A2, the other one is D3, other one is D4. All the three you need to figure out 
for a subgroup size of 5 right and i will show those values in the next slide these are the formulas for uh, locating the control chart for uh, i mean control limit for r chart and the x bar chart for upper control limit for the r chart is d4 into r bar lower control limit for the r chart is d3 into r bar then similarly upper control limit for x bar chart is x double bar plus at into r bar lower control limit is x double bar minus at into r bar so here is the value for a subgroup size of 5 a2 is 0 0.577, 0 0.577, D3 is 0, D4 is 2.114. Now you calculate the subgroup average. Subgroup average is nothing but add all the values in the subgroup, divide by 5. Then subgroup range is nothing but find out the maximum of the you know, value within each subgroup. For the first one, this is the maximum, 601.6. 598 is the minimum. The difference is 3.6. Same way, you have to calculate 20 subgroup average and then 20 subgroup range and then take the average of the averages that will be x double bar similarly calculate the average of the ranges that will be r bar so now you have x double bar and r bar those are nothing but the center line in your x bar chart and r chart respectively and now let us plot the r chart first and center line is you know 2.72 and since we have the formula we also know the statistical constant like uh, upper control limit is D4 into R bar, where D4 is 2.114. Lower control limit is D3 into R bar, where D3 is 0. So upper control limit 5.75 is marked. Lower control limit is 0 is marked. The first, uh, then this is center line, this upper control limit, this lower control limit. Since you have got 20 ranges, plot them one by one. First range plotted, then the second range, then third, then so four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. All the 20 ranges are plotted and all 20 ranges ranges are found to be well within the control limit. That means, you know, the range chart is under statistical control. The range is, you know, stable. There is no much variation, you know, uh, for the subgroup range is concerned. That means the variation within the subgroup are stable. And always in control chart, we connect the points in the same order of sequence, you know, using a straight line. Like this point is connected to the next point by a straight line and so on and so this is your r chart and now in the x bar chart the center line is 600.072 upper control limit which is x double bar plus r minus at into r bar lower control limit x double bar minus at into r bar so the center line is plotted upper control limit is calculated and plotted and uh, lower control limit is calculated and drawn center line is available upper control limit available lower control limit available now there are 20 subgroup each subgroup has got an average plot the first average Second subgroup average, third, fourth, five, six, seven, eight. And they see, look here, the eighth one is going beyond control limit. It's indicating there is the batch to batch variation is not under control. How you have been consistently producing till seven, no, seventh day, the eighth day, or otherwise still, no, the first seven shifts process under control. Something went wrong in the eighth shift. It requires investigation. So now, again, ninth, uh, I mean, the ninth subgroup, and so on, all of them are under control. Even if one point is out of the control limit, you must conclude that you know, the process is statistically out of control. Then you need to figure out the reason for the point going below lower control limit. And as usual, you connect it. So this is the uh, out of control point. The process is statistically out of control. I'm showing both the control chart now in a single slide, indicating that R chart is under control, under statistical control, however, X bar chart is under not under statistical control. When R chart is under control and X bar chart is you know, out of control, it simply means your process is shifted towards lower control limit, I mean towards the left side. The process center is getting shifted to the left and uh, this conclusion is correct only when R chart is under control, right? And now do something to ensure you know, the process center is moved towards the target value. So use an X bar R chart to draw a control chart to monitor subgroup means and subgroup ranges in one page and detect this presence of special causes. Subgroup mean allows you to track the process center, right? Process center should be always, you know, around the target. So keep an eye on the process center. And subgroup range allows you to track, track process variation, whether process variations are under control or not. If the process variation are under control, your process results are consistent, otherwise inconsistent. Why the R chart must be in control to interpret the X bar chart? Control limits in X bar chart are calculated considering both the process variation and center. So only when the R chart is under control, no, the variation is considered to be under control. And we, moreover, we use the R bar value for locating the 
control limits in the x bar chart and that's why you know r chart must be under control before uh, plotting the x bar chart when the r chart is not in control the control limits on the x bar chart will be un inaccurate and may falsely indicate an out of con control condition and your conclusions will go wrong because your process might get deteriorated one when whenever you know the process central central tendency is shifted or otherwise the variation is you know increased to a greater level whether the problem is due to the increased variation or due to the shifting of the process center you no know, needs to be figured out and for that purpose only we we plot the r chart first first you check for the variation if the variation is under control then look at the x bar chart and look check whether the central tendency is also under control so we have seen you know what is an x bar r chart and how to plot it and how to interpret it and consider using the x bar r chart when your data is continuous continuous means measurable characteristics like the length the dimension weight you no know, uh, all these things are uh, continuous data whenever subgroup size is 8 or less go for x bar r chart whenever subgroup size is more than 8 go for x bar s chart whenever subgroup size is equal to 1 simply go for imr chart the center line formula upper control limit formula and lower control lower, lower control limit formula are available here you can make use of them so what is that we learned here a control chart can help us to detect special causes it can be used to monitor stability determine readiness for improvement and demonstrate improved performance right x bar r chart monitors the mean and variation of a process ctq the ctq should be a continuous data type it works well when subgroup size is 8 or less a point falling outside the control limit indicates the presence of special causes in a process if a special cause is detected the process must be stopped for detailed investigation don't think that it is just a one point actually it is one subgroup one subgroup represents everything you know you have produced in a particular shift if one subgroup is out of control then you must thoroughly investigate investigate you no know, the everything you have produced in that particular shift i mean 100% inspection have to be carried out you no know, before uh, dispatching the product to the customer if subgroup size is more than 8 x bar s chart should be used if subgroup size is 1 then imr individual moving range moving range chart must be used r chart must be in control to interpret the x bar chart as the control limits are calculated considering both the process variation and process center when the r chart is in control you can be sure that an out of control chart is due to changes in the process center when the r chart is not in control the control limit on the x bar chart will be inaccurate and may falsely indicate an out of control condition center lines for average chart is x double bar uh, and the average chart upper control limit is x double bar plus a2 into r bar lower control limit x double bar minus a2 into r bar similarly center line for r chart is r bar and lo lower control limit is d3 into r bar upper control limit is d4 into r bar where a2 d3 d4 are statistical constant based on the subgroup size hope you have understood about the control chart and always uh, aim for no getting both the r chart as well as x bar chart under control thereby you can conclude that the variation within the batch and variation between the batches the variation within the shift variation between the shift right or you know under control to claim that you know your process or you know uh, results are consistent and stable and not only that your products are also uh, acceptable so you can make better predictions when your control chart is under control so thank you for watching this video i'll see you again in the next video